Blair and Jody Drysdale's cropping farm features multiple cereal crops, plus swedes and kale for winter feed for store lambs, hoggets and dairy heifers. They lease acreage to tulip and lily growers and grow hemp, which is pressed on farm and sold directly to consumers as oil, capsules and hand cream under their own Hopefield Hemp brand. We visited their extensive operation last summer. Hopefield is a 322 hectare property, predominantly now cereals, still with a livestock part of the rotation. It's important for us to have livestock in the rotation, clean up around you know, the edge of the crop paddocks and have that grass phase in the rotations. There's uh, 160 hectares of cereals at the moment. That varies a little bit between sort of 120 to 180 hectares, depending on what else is happening in the rotation. Um, at the moment, there's only 60 hectares of wheat this year, 20 of oilseed rape, 25 of autumn sown barley, 50 of spring sown barley, and then there's the 10 hectares of hemp, which has just gone on the ground, and between sort of 25 and 30 hectares of winter crops will go in between now and then some will follow the combine in January. So that's um, part of it will come from what used to be an all stock operation, all sheep and beef, sort of 15 years ago. So it's been a big change for my parents to sit and watch as Jody and I have taken over the running over the farm sort of 14 years ago now. It's a big change for them, big change for us and a lot of learning along the way. 25 to 30 hectares a year is leased out to the bulb farm next door to Naranda Bulbs. So they predominantly grow on our property 25 to so 30 hectares of tulips a year. They're a very high value crop for us as far as the lease value goes. So um, they leave peas for dead as far as that um, income per hectare. So we're in a crop of autumn sown firelight wheat. Yeah, we're mid flowering at the moment, um, looking very, very healthy. So I'm pretty happy with where the flag leaf's at, good sized heads. Hopefully we just get that rain we're talking about to reach that potential. And this should be harvested around about mid-February, uh, maybe late Feb, depending on the season, the more rainfall we get. Um, and if we give it another fungicide over the head, it'll hang on longer. So I'd like to think this would do 12 to 13 tonne. It certainly had the inputs to do that and really the only limiting factor of stopping it doing it is what remains for the season and, and the moisture we get through that grain fill period. This year we've put all seed rape in, in the mix in that part of the farm to try and alleviate wheat crops like this in second year wheat. We've been getting a bit of disease called take all, so it's been a bit problematic. So um, we'll go tulips, um, wheat, then all seed rape and then back into wheat and follow the rest of the rotation up with barley and forage rape for wintering lambs on. The challenges can be climatic ones. Uh, we do get very summer dry here at times, so uh, the wheat crop we're in at the moment does require a, a very healthy rainfall very shortly. To It's almost finished flowering, so it's about to start filling. So you know, we'll need a good inch or two on this crop to really fulfil its potential. So that is a challenge. Um, we can be a bit winter wet at times, so a bit of sensitivity about what crops um, we plant where. Um, some of the ground down the bottom of the farm is quite heavy, so we try and stay away from that with autumn sown crops. They tend to get a bit waterlogged at times and, and drown out and I'd rather not re sow so we stick to a lot of spring crops down that area. There's always challenges in cereals around weeds becoming a problem. Our biggest problem currently is without doubt brome grass starting to rear its ugly head and it's just something we can deal to with rotation um, chemistry which we, we really need to look after as cereal farmers and through the use of technology. So we've just invested in a new um, no-till drill so we can actually get away from any tillage at all and, and direct drill some of these crops and try and minimise that soil disturbance so we don't allow some of these weeds to have a chance to germinate. Since we've been growing, I became part of a growers group in Southland called Aotearoa So Hemp New Zealand. So that's just a collective group of people that are interested in growing or, or are growing currently. Um, from then, uh, we joined NZHIA and more recently I've been appointed to a government liaison committee um, as a farmer representative to um, just to help see where we can make positive changes with the industry, um, improve legislation around where um, hemp fits in the system and, and perhaps trying to um, make some improvements around its removal from the Misuse of Drugs Act and, and some of that sort of thing so we can grow the industry to what should be a very positive um, industry for New Zealand as a whole. I think fibre's got huge potential I, I, th I really do think that's where it will grow. Uh, it's a very good environmental fit, um, can fit well into dairy systems behind crops, picking up nitrogen 
and adding value um, as a as a fibre that can be blended with wool, which is you know there's a lot of work going on around that currently. So yeah, it's a pretty exciting industry to be involved in, regardless of what part of it you're involved in. This year we've planted 10 hectares. We run a no spray program over the crop, so that establishment is very important around trying to minimise weeds. Uh, so yeah, that's critical to that. Um, hopefully we nail the the yield this year. We're aiming for between one and 1.2 tonne to the hectare. So it'd be nice to be here um, sort of next winter with 10 to 12 tonne of seed. That's our, that's our aim for the season. And I'll be a gentle and open. We bought the shed last summer, um, as it is at the moment. We imported the press behind us during lockdown. So we got that out of Germany. I'm a great believer in um, buying you know, that very good German technology. They're very good at engineering. So we bought that in during lockdown, pressed all our own seeds to oil this season, um, done our own filtering and bottling in house this year. So we run an online business model. We haven't got any retail uh, outlets as such. We're all online. So our, yeah, our website we got up and running has been a yeah, really positive experience. It's been quite humbling about how people have taken up um, and supporting our products. So and the feedback is what makes it all worthwhile at the end of the day. So having that link to the consumer is extremely satisfying. Fair enough, it's got to pay its own way in a monetary aspect, but the real satisfaction for both Jody and I is, is that feedback and that connection to the consumer about producing what is a healthy food product for the human body.